Hello everybody, welcome back to the Hearthstone Champions League. Sorry for the delay, we had some production issues that we had to sort out before we jump into this match. But we are finally underway with the second match of the day. Once again, I'm TJ, joined by Protohype. Protohype just trolling the chat while we were waiting. I would never, I would never. Sharing, sharing the great tunes. Okay. Very excited for this uh, this match between the, the reigning world champ. And uh, Stan Sivka, the two two very good players in their own right, both from Europe, uh, both definitely tearing up the uh, the tournament scene in their own time, and uh, it's going to be a great game. I'd say these two players are two of the best in the world at the moment. I don't think there's anybody that can argue. And we'll have to see. First match is going to be Warrior for Stan Sivka, taking on Paladin from Oskaka. It looks to be Control Warrior versus Secret Paladin. Control Warrior versus Secret Paladin. A matchup most of us are familiar with at this point, but uh, some new and maybe maybe perceivably interesting secret decks have been coming out uh, as of late. Some value-centric based around uh, one or two mysterious challenges in a, in a mid-rangey type shell, uh, as opposed to the all-in Secret Paladin version that we were definitely accustomed to with mm -hmm. Double Secret Keeper and what have you. Um, Coghammer definitely indicative of that kind of hybrid uh, cross between the two. Some people opt to go for Aldor, some people without. Um, but definitely uh, definitely a newer version of a, uh, an older deck in, uh, in this match for Oskaka. Yeah, and Redemption used right off the bat, so this Knife Juggler is coming back. And uh, we'll die to the Swing of the Despite next turn, so that might prompt Oskaka to play something else besides Pilot of Children on Curve. He has a 50-50 to protect that Knife Juggler with uh, cog hammer, um, but playing that off curve might be something that he's not willing to do. Noble sacrifice won't save it as well because it'll still die to the death rattle effect. For sure, um, I think because you know Shredder just has such a uh, a high stat average on the other side. Uh, I think you have to go for it this turn just because he can't really swing into the Shredder and deal with the mini bot as well. So he's almost uh, almost certainly going to get. A, a solid cog hammer off on the following turn, and mm -hmm. uh, he'll be able to protect it with the deaths, or I mean the uh, noble sacrifice if he really would like to. Yeah. And no mysterious challenger just yet, but he does have a Doctor Boom, so the first piece of the trio, the Doctor Six, Doctor Seven, Doctor Eight, the Fantastic Three. Yep. Is there? And ooh, cut purse. We take those. I like it. Now, if he wants to attack face to get value out of the coin, then he has to make sort of an unfavorable trade. But I guess, yeah, if he gets the coin, he'll go up to six. So even then, he can't really cog hammer and get value out of it. He could just save the coin sure, sure. to make Dr. He's... Boom come yeah, next yeah. turn. I think you definitely want to save save the coin for a turn. Uh, just get that early Dr. Boom, especially considering uh, he already used an execute. Um uh, Stan Sivka does have the BGH. Uh, he just picked that up last turn, but I think it's I think it's reasonable to just uh, play the noble sack if you'd like to. Um, definitely not a, a cookie cutter play here. I think there's definitely definitely a lot to think about. Um, the shredder defended by the noble sack could be quite good, um, keeping that cut purse alive, uh, stuck, soaking up an attack. But you may want to uh, go ahead and kill the acolyte and not let it soak up the uh, the noble sack. On this turn and maybe use it for something more uh, more impactful like a bigger minion or what have you yeah so in great Stan Sifka fashion he is going to be writing down pretty much everything that happens in games so he says that notepad with him I'm sure that there's a banana not too far definitely off screen somewhere but highly highly characteristic of a uh, an X an X uh... Magic the Gathering player. Yeah. Always on always on the notebook, no mm -hmm. matter what you're doing. Yep. It's a good habit from uh, past that. card games. and So Skaka does get the coin from the cup purse. Does hold on to that for Dr. Boom that could come out next turn. Instead of playing Coghammer to protect his creatures, he does play the Noble Sacrifice. And is able to push a little bit more damage. And Sifka already down to 15 health, so that's quite a bit of pressure that Oskaka has managed to put on this early in. Since Sifka feels threatened enough to actually go ahead and slam the cut purse to not give Oskaka any more value out of that coin. Yeah, an interesting decision to go ahead and slam there uh, with no draw. He's going to get a gonna net an extra draw off of this Alkalite. Um, 
no weapons, unfortunately, to tank up that Noble Sacrifice, so he can't get a uh, superb value out of the Acolyte, but it does get rid of the Noble Sac. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it doesn't look like... It, it looks like Oskaka is, is pretty reasonably ahead on board, but we, we do know that this BGH will meet uh, meet Dr. Boom on the field, but Oskaka oh. picking up its Tyrion, so this changes everything. Yeah, he's still going to coin out the Dr. Boom, because he can't really pass up that type of opportunity, so Tyrion sure. is going to be a turn delayed. And pushing more damage down to 11 health, Stan Sifka is. And if he brawls this turn, he doesn't develop anything else. He risks something big coming out of uh, out of the board for Oskako with, you know, two pretty large targets there, Powder Treader and Dr. Right. Boom. And also the Boom Pot damage, if those don't survive the brawl. So that's a really scary concept. He might be thinking about going with something more along the lines of Bash and BGH in order to uh, more consistently fight for the board. For sure. Yeah, and it seems like that's the only play on this particular turn. He's got to get rid of the, the Dr. Boom, got to clear up that Shredder. Nothing too crazy coming out. Um, he does have a Dr. Boom lined up next turn, and uh, Oskaka's turn 7 will not be too threatening between Coghammer and Haunted Creeper. Not a whole lot of pressure being put on the board, but still really good against Brawl. Um, Stansifka, not apparent whether he's playing any, any Whirlwinds or anything like that. He is playing the the more mid-rangey Shredder deck, uh, as we've seen so far, um, maybe maybe a Varian win top end, something like that. Yeah, but, uh, a more a more value-centric deck for sure. Looks like Tyrion is gonna dominate our view here for <laughs> for a bit. And wow, okay, so Stansifka doesn't waste much time, and that's quite a bit of damage with the Consecration, but it's not quite lethal. I yeah, it's four, five, six. There's only there's not very much damage on the board. He could potentially do it with Boombot hits, but uh, why risk it? He is just gonna go ahead and right. s smack down the Tyrion and uh, start pushing more damage. Yeah, and all of a sudden Brawl Brawl not looking uh, too horribly bad, especially with that that Boombot hit on the Hollow yeah. Creeper. So uh, definitely a decent reset button at this point in the game. Uh, Stan Sivka picking up Baron Geddon. I'm not gonna do a whole lot on this turn, I don't think. But uh, yeah, I can't. I can't imagine that uh, Stan Sifka opts to do anything but brawl. I think the only the only debate would be what to do afterwards. Perhaps with a uh, perhaps with a an armor up armor smith into uh, pass, or perhaps just a shredder if he's feeling really confident. But with the two boom bots on the table, it seems really unlikely that he would want to uh, risk anything like that. It seems really unlikely that he'll actually even survive. Because he knows that if he brawls, there's going to be an Ashbringer on the other end. And he knows that sure, Boombots sure. are on the board, so he... I don't think there's any way he survives. Okay, He would so... need to play Armorsmith beforehand, I think, and it would need to survive, and then a Boombot would need to tank it, probably, I think is the yeah. only way he comes out. And then he could also average... Uh... Yeah, he would need... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, I'm pretty sure that's the only way he lives, because with the Consecrate, you're right, that would only be... Uh... He would need to... Like roll even if he rolled both ones on boom bots. Yeah, and, yeah, and Stan Sivka sees that. Yeah, he even cashes in on the uh, one extra armor first by attacking. The, oh wow, okay, never mind. Okay, so he's not dead on board. I thought he was going to be dead on board, but uh, for sure. Yeah, and Oskaka knows this. Uh, if he plays Consecration, even with Armor Smith on the board, the damage will take into effect before the armor is gained from the armor smith so even if you gain armor when you're at zero health you still lose the game and so skaka takes game number one pretty convincingly actually you know that's a pretty good spot from stan sifka he realized that he, he's in a situation where he can take a guaranteed survive one more turn or right, risk right. dying in most cases so uh didn't even spot that play i still thought he'd be dead on board even after the armor up but didn't take into account the extra armor he'd gain from attacking dr boom in well spotted, but it's not enough. For sure, that's that's definitely the sign of a, a cool-headed and uh, experienced player. Definitely playing playing to his outs, even on even on his last leg. Uh, very well played by Stan Sivka. Really, all he could do in that position. Um, Doctor Boom, Cog Hammer, Shredder, Tyrion. All things really, all really difficult. Uh, all things considered, for for where to deal with uh, mm -hmm. in any iteration of the game. Much yeah. less when you're playing against a world-class player who knows how to uh, to maximize those those advantages. Yeah. And Oskaka is going to throw out the warrior for game number two. It is Patron Warrior, the same list, probably very similar, that he ran at the World Championship just a few weeks ago, actually. 
And going up against Stan Sifka, who's going to be playing Hunter, this is a really tough matchup for Hunter, especially a more aggressive Hunter, which it looks like Stan, Sif Sif Stan Sifka is running. It is a mouthful. Uh, yeah, it's it, it's become it's become a bit of a meme, honestly. Uh, how how good Hunter's uh, Hunter's card quality used to be, uh, as opposed to how it is now compared mm -hmm. to in relation to everyone else's, rather. Um, you know, even even tempo, even tempo. Uh, patron warrior has you know tempo frothing and dread corsair and things to play for free and it just doesn't seem like like hunter's minions make the cut anymore and uh you know perhaps stan sifka knows something i don't but uh you know all the all the hunter decks i think we've seen in recent time have been a bit underwhelming mm -hmm. yeah that's very true and you know the more aggressive hunter list can still pull out some pretty crazy victories and they are good against paladin which is really popular right now, like Secret Paladin. Actually, most types of Paladin it is. Sure. It's just too risky to play in an environment where pretty much everybody's bringing Warrior. And yeah. at the moment, uh, in this group at least, every single player does have Warrior, and every single player does have Druid. So it's, it's basically the group of Warrior plus Druid, and then everybody has a different third deck. Cypher has Shaman, Oskaka has... Um, what did he play last game? <laughs> I can't remember. Firebat has Rogue, Sensika has Hunter, Oskaka has Paladin. There you go. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I was like, what? We oh, just when watched you said it. last game, I thought you meant the last match, and I was confused. No, no, no. Last game, game, last game, last game. Yeah. Uh, so, wow, lots of resources used for, for Sensika just to take out this Frothing Berserker. I guess he feels it's necessary at this stage to try and keep the limited amount of resources he has still on the board. Yeah, between between having to, to perhaps arcane golem to get rid of that and just use the hunter's mark and get the three damage for zero mana, you you probably just take the uh, the free hit mm -hmm. and just go go and compound the board with with shredder next turn. And really, you can't really expect to win against warrior uh, as hunter if you're not getting those minions down every turn. Stan Sifka just <laughs> the the definite the zone out into into eat into pass. I like it. Yep. He does not care one bit. Is that a banana? <laughs> it might be. It looks like a muffin almost. And he's munching that thing down. Yeah. His tournament game, his his tournament nutrition game is just on point. Definitely on point. Nobody can argue that. Well, Oskaka, this is going to take the Battle Rage value. Battle Rage for one. And not the greatest of hands. He's got pretty much his entire top end in his hand. He pretty much top out at Patron, then Boom, then Grom. So... Uh, weapon pickup is actually pretty decent at this stage. It allows him to fight back on board a little bit. Yeah, and being able to play the the Corsair on this turn would actually be quite good. But since he he did see a loot hoarder, I think uh, yeah, Oskaka is just going to opt to go ahead and Taskmaster that. Definitely a uh, definitely a necessary play. He'll oh, be able yeah. to play the, the Corsair to defend whatever he would like on mm -hmm. the following turn. But uh, still not a bad hand coming from out coming out from Stan Sifka. He still has the weapon to deal with the 2-2 two -two if you'd like. Um, he does have a knife juggler. I uh, may opt to weave some hero powers in because he does have so much out of hand damage. Uh, a more a more hybrid hunter build I think we, we're seeing from Stan Sifka. Um, and honestly, going into his high main turn, he's looking he's looking pretty all right. Yeah, and weaving hero powers in is actually really important against Warrior. Uh, just definitely. because the game is going to be longer, you need to make the damage that's in your hand and the creatures that are in your hand go a little bit further. For sure. And, uh, I mean, there are a lot of situations in other matchups where, you know, playing the Knife Juggler is better because it's more about, you know, that tempo. It's more about doing the damage as quickly as possible instead of being the most efficient. Exactly. But in this matchup, it's uh, weaving those in is really powerful. Most certainly. And uh, Hybrid Hunter, uh, a deck that has historically been pretty good versus Warrior, uh, probably less so in recent times, but uh, something that's, that definitely struggles with uh, the whirlwind effects of, of the, the modern patron. And uh, Oskaka having a, a tank on this particular play, definitely going to go ahead and Death Spite. Uh, wants to set up that, that Death Rattle damage uh, on his turn 6, and he's going to go ahead and hold off on playing the Corsair. Yeah, and well, Sansika just instantly pulls the trigger on the high main. This puppy is actually pretty scary on the board. Uh, Oskaka does have a way to deal with it just with 
um, like just on board if he wants to take the extra damage sure. from the death bite. But he also has an execute, so if he doesn't feel like he can take six damage, might just go face, execute it down, and leave the two twos. Yeah, the biggest problem here is yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no way you attack into the high main because he can just clear straight up on board and then uh, still have initiative on the other side. Um, actually, let me yeah. execute there. Hmm. Okay, he can't take the damage no matter what, but unfortunately, it is going to be a full clear for uh, Stan Sivka if he so chooses, and he will be able to play the second high main as a follow up, which will be uh, almost definitely game uh, if if Oskaka's only option is to play Dr. Boom on that turn. Yeah. And that's one of those cards that you really need when you're playing Hunter. If you have high main on turn six, and even better yet, high main on turn six and high main on turn seven. What? Mukla? That, that's a King Mukla. Mukla? And Oskaka gives a little sly smile as he realizes <laughs> that the world you is devil. is on to him. Maybe he... he he searched monkey, and he was going for fierce monkey, but he accidentally <laughs> he put Mukla. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even I, know if Mukla we'll comes up. The theory. Yeah, like I'm trying to think what what this Mukla would be for. Um, Perhaps for a, a high man that needs to get BGH. Yeah, that's that's true. I, I guess <laughs> Mukla's the strongest stat wise. Turn three creature you can play. Maybe he was expecting. Maybe in the warrior mirror against control warrior, they have a lot of cards, so you can potentially mill. Sure. It's just a stronger play than whatever else they're playing. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to hear his reasoning for it. I'm sure it wasn't yeah. a wasn't a random inclusion to some degree, despite how funny that would be. Someone trolled him and left <laughs> his collection <laughs> as he went to the bathroom or something and <laughs> put a mukul in his deck. Who knows? These boards. It's interesting, but uh, that is going to be uh, game number two. Oh, not quite. Wait, he still hasn't attacked with the high main yet, right? I wasn't paying attention. I was so... Okay, no, it's not quite game. Um, but pretty much yeah, game. Yeah, kind of looks like he didn't on the sidebar, I agree. Yeah. Huh. Armorsmith so, can do some some things here. Yeah, it really can, uh, especially with the inclusion of that unstable goal. Um, let's see. If he runs in... He needs some sick Boombot hits is what he needs. Yes, he does. The Boombot into the Arcane Golem, perhaps, because then he would force with uh, no out-of-hand damage. Maybe he needs the activations off of... Uh... Oh, wow. Okay. I didn't see the uh, the Freezing Trap under that under that hand of the... So, basically, he needs to kill off... Well, we know that there's no way he can survive because quick, quick shot. I don't think there's a way he can isolate the um, Savannah High Man potentially, and he sure. does. But it's still not going to be enough with the quick shot in hand. Actually, yeah, it will be. Yeah, with the with the pickup of Unstable without Al, I, it becomes uh, really awkward for San Sifka to try and push through. Um, huh. And if if Oskaka does hit a. Uh, some sort of whirlwind effect, which will be stopped now if he decides to play with it. But if he if he does hit one, he could be facing down a lethal if he's not able to kill him this turn. That's four armor gain, so he's basically at ten health. And since if we could put eight damage on the face here, I believe. Interesting decision to play the the knife juggler pre combat. Um, perhaps he was. Hmm. Maybe he really just didn't want uh, the high man to take any additional damage. Yeah. But, I mean, this could be a stabilization point for Oskaka. Um, let's see if he can survive. Back-to-back wow. -back taunts. I don't even know. I think Grom is, is going to be uh, better here. Okay, so if he Groms into the, um, the high main, then it, he'll be at uh, five armor. Then he can... Dr. Boom into the low that would be at 6 armor. Armor up, be at 8, and attack the armor smith into one of the 2-2s. Two He'll be at 9. So you would need a quick shot or a uh, kill command or a bow, I guess, off the top? Or perhaps a even a, perhaps arcane even a golem. Yeah, yeah, really, really any damage card, honestly. <laughs> yeah. But I think that's going to be Oskaka's only way to at least survive another turn and that's exactly what he's gonna do now 
He can pick up some tools in the coming turns to help him fight back, and he does have a 10 damage Grom on board. So we'll see if Stan Sivka can pick up damage. That's not enough. It's still one damage off. The only card, in fact, that probably would have dealt two damage on that turn. So definitely a, uh, a solid solid tactical play from Muskaka, realizing that uh, he needed to run that Armorsmith into the 2-2, like you said. Mm -hmm. And now, how does Stan Sivka go about this? Probably just kill off the Armorsmith and... Do you kill off the Grom? Because if you don't kill off the Grom, you take 10 damage. Mm -hmm. But if you do, then you miss 3 damage, and you're only applying a little bit of pressure this turn, because he'll gain 1 armor, so he'll yeah, go I, up to 8. I, I definitely would not kill the Grom this turn. Um, he's on... Yeah, he's Whoa. got lethal on board. Oh, okay. Interesting. But he may, he may be putting him on the fact that uh, he's already seen the unstable, he's already seen the Grom, maybe he didn't have any better options, but we do know that uh, Oskaka does have that Dread Force in hand, but I I gotta say, I really think I like going face there, considering his, his highest amount of burst is already on the table, you're seeing how much damage he's going to do, and there's no way that Oskaka just runs Grom into face twice, so uh, an interesting trade. from uh, Yeah, Stanks if he had game. gone face, he would have had lethal this turn. Yeah. Uh, now he doesn't. Uh, he's actually still... Uh, one damage off, and he can't get through this. And there's going to be an armor up every turn. All of a sudden, Oskaka's at a point of stabilization. and um... I think you have to kill Command the Creature, yeah, and just yeah. keep your board intact. There's, yeah, he's in, a, he's in the same position he was last turn. Just got to keep the dudes up and uh, try and push for lethal with that extra creature that he cannot kill. Ho, ho, ho! Hello! And the hits keep coming. Yeah, uh, but now there's no taunt in the way. There's He's he's one damage off. There's a, a pretty much any draw any draw that does deals direct damage in San Sifka's deck is going to be it. And what is it going to be? It's an Abuse of Sergeant. So yeah, that is going to be lethal. And mm -hmm. Oskaka was on the verge of stabilization, but didn't quite get there as San Sifka takes game two. Finds him with honor. Yeah, um, an interesting deck. Uh, definitely a more traditional take on uh, on Hybrid Hunter. Uh, aside from that, aside from that one Grom kill, I think uh, I think it was pretty well played. He did have uh, he did have what he needed to to combat the warrior. Generally, you want the value minion into high main or high main into high main. One of those two, and uh, he did have some solid damage. But uh, pulls it out in the end. And when you fill when you fill two thirds of your deck with with out of hand damage cards, you'll you'll usually find that off the top. Yeah, maybe Sin Sipka was thinking about playing around something along the lines of a second armor smith or uh, sure, like sure. a whirlwind effect because his board was you know pretty low right pretty low health he had a couple of one health creatures i do believe so um it, it was just him i i guess playing safe but i like how you said it all of his burst was on the table sure, sure. you don't really get much more burst than that especially now that <laughs> worse on commander <laughs> rest in, in peace yeah, is uh in peace. no longer with us um, yeah, I think I think seeing the previous turns of that game, I think you kind of have to just surrender to being dead to something like the second Armorsmith or you know the whirlwind off the top, as you you pretty much know that he didn't have it in the turns previous, um, based on how he played it. But yeah, I think uh, I think it was a reasonable play, but maybe not the one I would have made. Yeah, for sure. And it looks like we're just a few moments away from jumping into game number three here, and. It's all tied up. Sansiska has Warrior and Druid remaining. Oskaka still has... Oh, Warrior and Druid remaining. Okay. So both uh, both players have the exact same decks remaining, except Sansiska has Control Warrior. Oskaka does have the Patron Warrior, as we've seen. He really favors that deck. Definitely. Um, receiving coaching from uh, my teammate there at, actually, uh, before the, the World Championships. Yeah, I was, I was uh, there... Uh, doing some behind the scenes stuff and I got to meet the rat the best patron warrior player in the world indeed as his twitter says and as he will tell you maybe not so much anymore <laughs> it's more of like a I, meme uh, now I actually think uh, Oskaka actually said in an interview he, uh, he said that rat was in fact the best patron player in the world interesting, yeah. uh, interesting coming from the world champ I learned a lot from the rat about that deck in the short amount of time that I spent talking to him so definitely that tells you a lot and looks like it's aggro druid for Oskaka. That's interesting. Yeah, uh, another thing that has been thrown around a lot among the uh, the pro scene recently is the the idea of the new shade in uh, in aggro druid. But it, it would seem that Oskaka is running the, the 
three drop shade. I think Mounted Raptor was being put in that slot in, in the aggressive decks. Uh, apparently Oskaka has decided to opt for something a little bit more evasive, which may uh, which may end up working definitely in his favor against a, uh, a control warrior from Stansuka. Yeah, I was running a, a similar list last night, and I, I ran one Shade of Naxxramas and two Mounted Raptors. Sure, sure. Uh, so I, I really like the Mounted Raptor card. It gives you that stickiness, gives you more targets for Savage Roar. It can really put a, a, a wrench in your opponent's plans if you get something like Voidwalker, which there isn't really that many one-drops in the game, so it's not that unlikely. Right, right. And the stats you're getting off of uh, off of Mounted Raptor usually in the uh, in the three drop slot definitely quite quite good in the current state of the game. But uh, we see four four a flush hand of removal spells from Stan Sifka as well as two death bites. So definitely has some answers for any early creatures that Oskaka will be playing. Um, uh, pretty much a nightmare scenario if you want to be playing Fell Reavers on back to back turns, especially <laughs> when it's your only your only game plan. Yeah. Uh, Rip deck. <laughs> Rip all deck. I always feel super nervous when I play Fell Reaver. Yeah, it, it gets it gets real weird real quick against decks that can play uh, multiple cards in one mm -hmm. turn. Yeah. And Stansifka's going to have to think here. If he uses the Despite Charge, then he doesn't have a way to proc and execute next turn, but I don't think he's too worried about that, but uh, getting maximum card discarding value by playing <laughs> that despite first. I think uh, this will make Oskaka think twice about playing the second one, but not really, uh, not really too concerned with the amount of cards in your deck, uh, especially when you have combo in hand. Yeah. Although uh, Warrior being at thirty on on turn five when you're playing Aggro Druid is never something you want to see. Yeah, and it's, I, I don't think there's a. It's going to be really tough for Oskaka to win from this point. And uh, he doesn't really have any other option besides just playing the second Fell Reaver. For sure. And, I mean, again, this is probably going to be another six, potentially nine cards discarded, uh, depending on what he draws. So it looks like it is going to be six. I'd imagine Shield Slam and Execute will come out here. Um, he can take the eight and just Execute, but then he's not really developing anything else. Right. So... Yeah, I think you had the right idea with the, uh, the Shield Slam Execute. Um, can't really brawl yet. Uh, Thorson's gonna open you up to a whole lot of stuff you don't wanna don't wanna be subjecting yourself to. So, uh, pretty sure we're just gonna see a, a clear of the Fell Reaver and an armor up from Stan Sifka. But that shade's still looming. Uh, definitely not something that Stan Sifka can take lightly. Uh huh. And uh, but Oskaka doesn't have a whole lot of uh, sustained damage that he can do to get his opponent down within combo range. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very true. Sansifka's really thinking about this turn, and he might be thinking, you know what, I'm going to play Emperor Thorsan and mill his entire deck is probably what he's thinking. He's saying, I'm going to take 14, at least, <laughs> at least, just to have the potential to get rid of your entire deck. So let's see, 14 plus 6 from Savage Roar would be got 20. 24 on this turn. Holy moly. That's a lot of damage. Yeah. And you know, if he had if he had Gromash uh, in his hand with the Thorison reduction, and he would be able to play it on the following turn, I would understand this play. But I I can't really agree with leaving the Fell Reaver up for for an entire an entire turn. When you um, have double shield slam, double execute, exactly six cards, and and no real way to activate your shield slams, I think that's pretty much the best value you're going to get out of it, um, especially with uh, yeah. It's it's interesting, but uh, you know, definitely leaving Oskaka with a, a window to do a lot of damage that he otherwise would not have been able to do on this turn. Yeah, this is. I, I, to be honest, you got to respect this call from Stan Sifka. For sure, for sure. It's you're you're thinking, well, I'm I will be able to mill his entire deck, and he's actually going to silence his own Fell Reaver. So there, Stan Sifka's plan is probably out the window here, as he basically just gave. Eight free damage over to Oskaka. I can imagine that that was his plan was to for sure um, was to go for the the mill strategy with so many reduced cards in his hand. He was pretty likely to discard twelve 
cards from Oskaka's deck, which yeah, doesn't really matter. Though. Point. Do we know how how many cards are left by chance in uh, in Oskaka's deck? Well, he discarded six last turn, and he's used uh, eight, so probably somewhere in the sub fifteen range. Thirteen, twelve or thirteen cards, I think. Sure. With three left, okay. three left in this. So, hmm. you know, with with the amount of removal spells you have in hand, though, and uh, the fact that he only had to go for or only had the ability to go for Fell Reavers, like he didn't play anything really before, um, only the Shade on three. I think you kind of have to assume your opponent has uh, a fair amount of spells in hand, and if if they're never able to cast them because you know you're never like allowing yourself to get in range or, uh, for combo range. Um, I'd have to say I'd, pro I'd probably be more comfortable just uh, just taking his damage off the board. But th an interesting play, nonetheless, because if he does if he does get away with that, then uh, he ends up in a, a pretty prime position to take the game on the following turn with fatigue. Yeah, a rare spot where the warrior is at higher health than the aggro druid on <laughs> turn eight, but. That's just the way this game has gone, and Oskaka's going to have to take another 6 here in order to... Oh. Wow, okay, never mind. He's setting up for the uh, next turn lethal, hoping that Stancifica doesn't have a way to deal armor outside of just his armor up. And you got to respect this. He's looking... Taking what he has with his hand and trying to make it work. For sure. Um, if he does the combo on the following turn, you have to play the Aspirin pretty much. Force the attack, probably. Mm -hmm. um, he may opt to hold it back. I'm not entirely sure what that would do. Yeah, he, he sees the play. Um, he's going to go ahead and throw it back to Stan Sivka. Now, if Stan Sivka doesn't kill his own, doesn't kill his own Baron Geddon, um, he's going to be at 17. He's going to take two damage to 15. He can't actually hero power, so he's one off lethal in the current state. As cock is at least. Wow. Okay. And uh, Stan Sivka's Baron Geddon is going to block him from being able to armor up next turn. But Oskaka's dead. If he doesn't clear off this Baron Geddon the following turn, because he can hero power up to eight, but Baron For Geddon sure. plus the extra damage would kill him. So he's going to have to use Force of Nature Savagor here, throw four of the damage into this. Uh, Baron get it and push damage to face and hope it's going to be enough, but he is so close to dead. Yeah, Bash, a, a really solid answer on that particular turn, considering uh, Stan Sivka had no armor built up and could not deal with it out of hand with just a just a shield slam. Um, Oskaka definitely playing to his outs there, <laughs> looking for a uh, looking for a way to to fit lethal through with the Baron Geddon, but uh, Stan Sivka unfortunately having the bash for him. Um, he does get a Belcher off the top as well, which will uh, be pretty pretty horrendous for. Rose Kaka in this current position with uh, just minions and no spells in hand. Yeah. Still a chance, though. As... Always a chance. Yeah. We'll see. He's he's only got a few turns left to live. He's going to be on a one-turn clock. I don't know what he can draw next turn to keep himself alive. Both shield slams used. But I don't think there's any way that he gets out of this situation. Stan Sivkin knows it. Ready with the uh, the milk or whatever that is. The OJ. The OJ. <laughs> yeah. Taking a page out of Crip's book there. But Stan Sivka does take game number three. Goes up to a two to one lead in the series with just his own druid remaining. Oskaka still has Patron Warrior, still has his Agar druid. Definitely going to be an interesting rest of this game. No doubt. Not every day you see the the world champ down two to one in a uh, in a best of five, but Stan Sivka nonetheless putting himself in a in a prime position to win, playing tight and yeah. uh, looking to take a game off of the the world champ in this uh, HCL Group D. Yeah, keep in mind this is double elimination or like I said earlier GSL style if you're more familiar with that terminology for these group stages. There's two players from the group that will advance, so the winner of this match goes on to face Cipher. And the loser goes on to face Firebat, which was our uh, first match of the day. And then there will be a decider match after that. So at the end of the day, two players will move on to the playoff stage, which I believe will start next week, maybe even later this week. I'll get confirmation on that before the broadcast ends today. And Druid versus Druid, here we go. Yeah, and an aggro Druid, 
uh, coming out for Gross Kaka again. Uh, he does have Leper Gnome and a Knife Juggler, so that's a solid stack. Uh, so a just... really solid hand overall on the coin, Gross Kaka, honestly. Yeah, I'd say you just go for the Powder Shredder early on. I mean, that's um, a really tough to deal with, even if you can rat the first iteration. Right, right. You have to deal with what comes out at the second part. And at the moment, Sensifka's just set for a ramp turn with Wad Growth. Does pick up Wrath, so that's going to make him think for a bit. Yeah, and as you said, if, if he's uh, if he's wrathing the Pilot of Shredder, you know, Knife Juggler are definitely going to stick for an extra turn. And uh, this could get pretty awkward for, for Sensifka coming up on turn four. Okay. Mm -hmm. I really like the decision to, to stealth that there instead of snap playing the Juggler because of the, the acceleration... Uh, going into turn four for the keeper, yeah, uh, Oskaka definitely seeing that coming, uh, knowing that Oska or Stansivka had to make a decision there. Didn't just snap Wild Growth uh, mm -hmm. if he's waiting. You know he's got something to think about, and if you ask the if you ask the follow up question, you know it's probably a removal spell. Yeah, so so definitely a heads up play from Oskaka there. Stansivka, gonna think here. It's just pretty tough. He's pretty much set on Joe the Claw next turn, so how does he set up his board in the best position for that? And probably just a Wrath here, and then hope something comes out of that Shredder that he can Hero Power down. If not, then he's basically just going to have a Hero Power on nothing, and Sorcerer's Apprentice is not that. And that's actually really good for Oskaka. Above average in, in stats, and it's weighted more towards the attack, which is good for an aggressive deck most of the time. Right, right. And uh, as a Druid player, the, the last thing you want to see, uh, reminiscent of the, the old Zoo days, is uh, a bunch of 3-2s staring you down. And that, that's uh, definitely what's going to be happening uh, in Oskaka's favor here. He does have the ability to just commit to the Living Roots if he would like to, and then uh, play whatever he has off the top on 4 if he, if he can, and then Lotheb to try and protect this board. So uh, a, a, pretty, a pretty fearsome show of power from, uh, from Oskaka. Yeah, and, you know, this is a little bit vulnerable to, vulnerable to swipe, but, you know, not really. Because right, right. even swipe, you deal two damage from the Leper Gnome, you still leave at least six power on the board. Well, you still leave six power on the board unless you have Innervate to hero power down, and For which sure. means you're still sitting at 12 health the following turn. So, uh, Sensifka's going to have to keep her here and send her to the Claw just to stop some of this damage. At Oskaka doesn't pick up anything to play though, but still uh, an aggressive stance. He's going to be able to take. He can just go all face here now that he has Druid the Claw, which is some instant damage. Definitely. Uh, it's going to be 11 damage on the board for Oskaka. It'll put a stance if it is 7, uh, barring Hero Power or anything like that. So Druid of the Claw definitely looking really solid uh, as a pickup on turn 5. Certainly better than Lotheb in this particular situation. Um, and stance if really hurting here. Yeah. So, Sensifka can go for, if he goes for Fortune, Force of Nature here, I think he's dead. So he can clear off everything but one of the creatures here. Right. And uh, no matter what he clears, he's still... Oh, okay. I meant one off, actually. One off, he yeah. the Lepernome, yeah. If he uh, had to adhere a power, the, the Lepernome. Yeah. yeah, but due to the Claw, charge plus the uh, happy little tree there. <laughs> is going to be enough for Lethal. And that was a quick game that ended on turn 5. That's yeah, nuts. Yeah, that Sorcerer's Apprentice was actually way better than, than uh, Extensive could expected, but there's not a whole lot he could do about that. Uh, definitely, if you have the ability to kill uh, kill Hacker Druid Minions as, as the mid-range player, you take the you take the shot, and uh, mm -hmm. he definitely gave himself the best chance to claw himself out of that. Yeah, that Sorcerer's Apprentice was really MVP because it allowed for Living Roots, which... For sure. Gave the extra 1-1s. One also, it gave the two juggles, which ended up being enough for Oskaka to close it out. So, final game here of this series. It's a game number five, but the series has felt pretty quick. It is going to be uh, Druid for Sansifka versus Patron Warrior for Oskaka. Yeah, and I have to say a, a favorable matchup for, for Patron Warrior in, in my experience. Um, definitely something that... I don't think Oskaka is uncomfortable playing against mm -hmm. uh, by, by any means. Uh, but Sansufka uh, opting to hold the coin for the for the Aspirant, as we've seen a lot of people do in this HCL tournament. Uh, definitely a, a more conservative route, not willing to uh, to throw it out into into the jaws of the, the Fire War X. But... Yeah, and we talked, we talked, talked about it earlier last week. 
in the broadcast. It's good because if they do a fire War Axe, it forces them to play off curve because they're for one sure, turn for sure. after War Axe turn, but one turn before Despite. So it puts the Warrior in an awkward position if they do have that. And Oskaka doesn't. He's one turn away from the Despite. He could choose to develop Frothing Berserker or Acolyte of Pain here and decides to put more power on the board with the Frothing Berserker. Definitely. Uh, definitely a, a play that I agree with with the... Uh... With the death bite on deck, you know he's got he's got an answer for a, a potential five drop coming down with the coin. Um, can also answer a shredder if he'd really like to. And uh, really, really solid looking board for Oskaka against Druid. Definitely has the weapons that he needs uh, in the mid game. He has Gromash uh, for a potential combo kill later. Has some draw and a uh, shredder, which is you know never bad. Yeah. So that turn it might seem a little weird, but <clears throat> in reality, what Sensifka is doing is he's trying to set up for a guaranteed Harrison on a Despite next turn. Sure, sure. Um, <clears throat> or just a guaranteed 5-drop, because let's say he coins out Azure Drake this turn. <clears throat> Excuse me. Next turn, he's on uh, only 4 mana if his Darnassus Aspirin gets killed. So this right. way, using the Wild Growth, he can hold onto the coin. Also, he gets the guaranteed ramp. Uh, so he can take out the Despite next turn, or at least guarantee himself a play. And when else are you going to play that Wild Growth? Exactly. And uh, when else are you going to play that Harrison, for that matter? Because uh, sure, yeah. Fire, Fire War X definitely not uh, the, the best target, but Despite on the second charge, uh, taking away the, the freedom of, of being able to Whirlwind uh, whenever you want, uh, is definitely something that Druid wants to be doing to the patient player. But uh, Oskaka does have the follow-up Despite. Not something that uh, Sensuko would love to see at this point. Not the worst thing in the world. Yeah, uh, and it's... This Frothing Berserker is getting really scary. It's at 6 damage, or 6 uh, attack now. So, it's out of BGH range. There's no spot removal in the hand of Sensuko. The only thing he can do if he wants to remove it right now is <laughs> either <laughs> hero power it and then BGH it, <laughs> or Drew to the Claw uh, charge. And right. I don't know, I... it. Oh, wow. Just coin Dr. Boom. Yeah, with only one minion on the board um, and not a whole lot of time on your hands, I think uh, I think this is probably the best play to, to ensure that a, a clear board perhaps comes back on, uh, on your next turn. You can lock up initiative and then start, you know, taunting up in front of your in front of your Drake or your uh, minions that are left from the, mm. the fallout of this particular turn. But, uh, yeah. Definitely an aggressive line from Sansuko. So Oskaka picks up a really good draw here with the Inner Rage. This allows him to uh, make a big patron turn if he so chooses. The question is, is how much does he trust in these boom bots to not screw him over quite a bit? I'd imagine he'll just trade in the Frothing Berserker and uh, go face and hope these boom bots help him as opposed to hurt him. And that's exactly what he's going to do. These boom bots are going to be huge. Winner, winner. Best case scenario, they hit the dam undamaged patrons. Oh there we boy. go. Okay, that's moderate. Pretty pretty middle of the road scenario there. Um, yeah. Oskaka still at 22 HP. Uh, nowhere near nowhere near the potential combo range. Uh, mm -hmm. Stan Sifka with no force of nature, no ability to combo down these patrons, and no swipe uh, with the spell damage Drake. Um, looking in in dire straits here, honestly. After after one turn. Yeah, he, he, he's just going to have to use Drew to the Claw to clear here. And it's almost always better to go charge form here to clear off the right, guaranteed right. patron just because um, if your opponent gets into a situation where they can remove your Drew to the Claw and also get Whirlwind effects, you you get screwed over pretty heavily. And uh, still another strong turn for Oskaka, able to draw two cards, clear the board. Plus, you know, propagate another patron as a bonus. Also, he puts up Stan Sifka down to 8 health. How do you come back from this? That is, that's a solid question. Uh, I don't, not one that I think I can answer uh, on this particular turn. But he does pick up the swipe. He doesn't have an innervate, though. Never got a, never had an opportunity to play. That's second wild growth. So. He can pick up an innervate here, but he doesn't. And I think that was going to be his only way out. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's not dead to just the board, um, because there is only 8 damage, but we can see that Grom is in the hand from Oskaka, and with that, Oskaka is going to take the series 3-2, to two, move on to the winner's match to face Cypher. 
Since Sivka's not out just yet, he will go on to face Firebat in the loser's match from Group D to try and fight for his tournament life, but a uh, big win for Oskaka. Yeah, really really convincing, to be honest. Uh, Oskaka definitely opting to go for those those aggressive early game creature-centric, uh, almost shredder-centric strategies. Yeah. And uh, it definitely pays off against Oskaka's slower lineup. Yeah, uh, really impressive stuff. And that's going to do it for match number two. Coming up next, I believe, will be the loser's match between Firebat and Stan Sifka. San Francisco of Tough Road, you know, having to face back to back the the 2014 World Champion and the 2015 World Champion. So we'll see if you can take that. But we are gonna have to go to a break before we jump into that next match. Don't go anywhere, guys. Continuation of Hearthstone Champions League Group D continues right after this.